today I would like to show you a new ball cap design that includes a P95 filter, a fan that blows the air gently over your face behind a face shield and provides protection for our eyes and also provides us with clean filtered air, hopefully to protect us more from this COVID virus that we've been fighting. It's also constructed with a power pack, 12 volt power pack, that runs very quietly. You can fit into your pocket and will last all day, over 30 hours. If you'd like to learn how to construct one of these COVID caps, stay tuned. All indications are that if we all wore a mask all the time, we stayed six feet apart, we could probably cut down the spread of this virus. But not everybody feels comfortable wearing a mask and you've all been in situations, I'm sure, where, where there are people that aren't wearing a mask and you would probably like to be a little more protected. And I think what we need is a source of clean uh, filtered air that can protect our uh, breathing and also to protect our eyes because uh, research has shown that we can even get infected from COVID through our eyes. So what I'd like to show you today is a hat that I put together that will give us a source of clean filtered air. This is a standard ball cap. Really, you could use any one to construct one of these. It's nice to have a brim on it, but all the brims are pretty much the same size, so that's fine. A hole is cut in the uh, brim, and I'll show you how that's done later. And then on top of the brim, you can't see this right now, but I'll show you all the components in a little while, but there's a little 12 volt fan that's there, and then connected to the fan is a little adapter that allows one to connect a filter. This is a 3M filter. This one is a particular a P95 filter. And that then provides us with filtered air that comes down across our face. And I'll show you here. You can put this on. This is just really light. It's just like wearing a ball cap. You really don't feel any different at all. And the back of the cap is connected to a cable and that cable is connected to a power pack. It's a light power pack, 12 volt power pack that fits in your pocket. And when you turn that on, you just get this source of air that comes across your face. You can feel it and that protects your eyes as well as that. And you could even wear your, your cloth mask underneath and be even more protected. Well, how well does this work? The nice thing, one of the nice things about this is if you've tried Wearing a face shield uh, with your mask or without your mask, you oftentimes will find that it starts to fog up. And uh, with this air flowing, I have not seen any evidence of any fogging at all. I, th I think if you went out when it was uh, really cold outside, you'd probably have to have some heat provided to keep it from fogging. But just on an interior situation, it should be fine. Uh, the amount of air that is provided by the fan is quite a bit. It's about two, depending on the filter. There's a couple filters available. It's twice or four times the amount of air that you need to typically breathe under a normal situation. And uh, of course, it's not saying that there couldn't be some COVID that can get in the sign. So it's, I think you still need to be careful. It's not a total 100% protection but certainly that fresh air that's flowing over your face is reassuring when you're in a situation close to other people. This battery pack is really, this is commercially available as well. I'll show you where later. Yeah, and this can run for 30 hours. So you can wear this mask running like this all day at your workplace or wherever you happen to be. If you're in air travel or on a bus, uh, you're in the workplace, even teachers in the classroom, you can use this all day. And then you it comes the battery pack comes with a charger so you can just charge it at night and, uh, and you'll be ready for your next venture out into the real world. Okay, in the next part of the video, I'm going to show you all of the components that go into making one of these. And then if you want to, uh, I'll, later I'll show you how the construction is actually done. 
Okay, let me show you all the components that are used to make this COVID cap. Of course, you need a ball cap of some sort. Uh, doesn't make any difference to me in color, of course, uh, but uh, as long as it's got a, uh, a brim on it, that's the standard brim, it should work fine. Um, I do have a face shield. This is a face shield that's by Cap Lens. It's commercially available, but there are a lot of face shields out there you could use, but this one seems to slide on the rim of the cap really nicely. And then to make, uh, I have to cut a hole in the cap. So I actually, with the 3D printer, I just printed up a little flexible uh, template that I can put on and hold on the top of the cap to mark where I want to cut a hole in the cap and where I want to punch some holes for the screws. That just allows me, you know, it's not needed, but it just kind of makes it a little bit more accurate uh, and easy to do. And then this piece here is uh, also printed on a 3D printer. And this goes on the bottom of the lid. Uh, where the hole is and then on top of the lid top of the brim goes this fan this is a fan that um, you can buy on Amazon uh, it's a little 12 volt fan and uh, delivers enough air so that even with the filter which slows down the air uh, is enough that it delivers two to four times the amount of air that you need to breathe normally and then on top of the fan, there's an adapter. This is a little adapter that I printed up. And it is, I printed that up on the 3D printer. There's where the air comes out. And this top here is where the filter attaches. I just went on to one of 3M masks and uh, copied the location of the little hole, little tabs that they have on here that allows the filter to attach to the adapter. And then there's a little gasket that 3M makes also that you can buy on Amazon. And that allows the either of these two filters to attach, just slips on and turns. And of course, then there are three or four screws. These are 632 screws. Um, they're three quarter inch long and they uh, will uh, hold all these things together on the on the cap. The two filters that are available that I found, uh, 3M may have some additional ones, but these are very lightweight, less than an ounce, uh, hardly anything at all. And this is a P95. It, it uh, uh, filters uh, the point, I think it's 0 0.3 micron uh, particles, 95% of those are filtered out. And uh, here's another option in a different color, which is the P100. And that blocks like 99%, 99.8% perhaps of the particles. But this one doesn't flow as much. This only gives us about twice the amount of air that we breathe with this setup. This gives about four times the amount of air that we breathe. So I don't know exactly which one would be the best, but um, until we do, you maybe just find that you like one color more than the other. And then of course the, the fan has to be connected to the power somehow. So I will connect, I'll show you in the next part of the video how I do this, but this plug is routed in the cap and, and then it just attached, solder those wires together. And then of course the battery pack that we talked about already and a cable three foot cable that allows us to connect that to the plug at the back of the hat. Okay, in the next part of the video, I'll show you actually how I cut the hole in the cap and line it up and put every and put everything together and solder the wires in case you want to do some of that. The the 3D the these three items right here are made on the 3D printer and I'll um, show you uh, a three if you haven't seen a 3d printer uh, working before i'll show you an example when i'm printing one of these up so you can see what it's like you may know somebody that has a 3d printer or you may there may be some place where you can have things printed up i'm not sure i'm new to 3d printing myself so don't know everything 
that there is that's available. But um, I will make this, uh, if you know somebody, if you've been doing some 3D printing or you know somebody that does it, they will know what I mean when I say there is an STL file and I can uh, post the STL file on the, uh, on the description below so that if you want to print up some, one of these, these components, or if you want to have somebody print up, up those components, you can use that STL file to do that. Okay, in the next part of the video, then I'll show you how all these are put together to make the cap. Okay, let me show you just a short amount here. of one. This is a, a 3D printer that I just bought uh, within the last year. Um, it's, uh, I'll just show you a little bit about this if you've never seen one of these. And uh, I'll just start, I've got, I'm going to print up one more of these uh, adapters. And uh, so I'll let this heat up. This is going to start heating up and take a while. Okay, now it's going to come down and it will start printing. And this is using the program on the inside just to print up the piece that what it's printing right now are one of these little adapters. And that'll take probably about uh, two and a half or three hours to uh, print that up. And this actually will print it up at an angle like this. So there'll be some support structure down below, but I wanted to have this be vertical for the accuracy of the print. Okay, so we've been uh, uh, printing this piece. Let me take this piece off right now. You can see it right here. And sometimes they're loose enough you can just pull them off like that. If, when this cools down, they come off pretty easily. And so you can see the piece that we want is there been printed. It's got some support structure underneath and let's take that off. Okay, we have this piece and let me just try to take off this support structure. I just got an X-Acto knife here to get a little uh, flexing in it. And that just pops off. And that's what kind of supported it when it was being printed. And uh, there also needed to be, if you come in and look real close here, you'll see that there's little support structures in here that pop off. I'll pop those off. That's kind of where the filter will go underneath and be kind of there, held in place. Okay, so that is pretty much ready to go. The one thing is that we need to have tapped holes so that the screws will hold it all together. It turns out that uh, you can write the program in such a way that you put tapped holes in there, but they don't really come out as well as um, if they're really tapped with a real tap, and so I do that. And you can tap these just by hand like this, but um, since I'm doing a lot of these, I just made up a little support structure to give it hold the taps in the, uh, in the correct direction, nice and perpendicular to the surface. And so we can just put it in and this tap can go. And you'll see the tap coming through the plastic there if you look real carefully. And I usually go in around 20 turns or so. And there is a tapped hole. And of course, we want to tap all four. So once this is out, I'll take this around, tap that after the next one, tap that after that, and I have all four tapped. Okay, so let's get started on the hat. And so what I'm going to do to do this is take the hat. I've got this little template that I printed up and I'm just going to put that about in the center and kind of look to see if it's square and then I'm going <laughs> to pull that off and um, so that looks pretty good and then I, this is just a, a silver med, uh, marker 
And so that'll just kind of show me where I'm going to punch the holes for the screws. Usually I'd use a dark magic marker, but these hats are black, so these this particular hat, we've done it on lighter colored hats, and I just use a black magic marker. And this will show me where I want to cut the hole out. Let's take a look at what we got there. So that's what it looks like. Okay, so let's go out in the garage and we'll punch some holes. Here we are out in the garage. Uh, we're going to be punching some holes uh, in the hat. Hey, I'm going to show this hat a little bit to you. You can see where the holes are going to be punched. Actually, I punched one hole already. And now I'll show you how I punch these holes. I, I use this uh, punch that I just happen to have uh, to punch the holes. But uh, you could be punching these holes with a little hammer punch as well, I'm sure. And so I just line it up. Where all that, where the silver mark was that I put on, and just check with the light and make sure it's pretty centered. I'm going to move it over a little bit. That should be fine. And then I just punch the hole like that. And so now I've got two of those holes punched. I'll go ahead and punch the other two holes, and I'll meet you back inside, and we'll start cutting out this part where we're going to have the fan. So here we are. Uh, We've got the four holes that we punched out in the garage. Now we have to cut out this hole where we're going to have the clearance for the fan. So I'm going to do that uh, with the X-Acto knife. And I just, I'm, all I'm going to do is just follow this. Let me get some stronger glasses on so I can see a little closer. So I don't know if you can see this very well. I'm just going to use this X-Acto knife just to cut through the cloth right along where that silver line is. And as we do that, this cloth is going to lift up like that. Okay, let me, let's stop the video. I'll go ahead and go all the way around and then I'll, when I remove the cloth, I'll show you that last step. Okay, so I've cut all the way around there and you can kind of see that I can kind of pull this off here. My hand's probably in the way for you to see, but there are some stitches in there and I'll just sort of cut those as I pull this off. And when you get this off, you're gonna find, generally these things are plastic on the inside. The brims have a plastic material. Like that, and then they have a bunch of stitching through there. Okay, let me uh, turn this over now. I would like to have some mark on the back side so I can cut off the cloth there too. Okay, so now I've, uh, I want to make a cut on the bottom here as well. And so I've just taken that little piece that we printed up and put screws there to hold it in the right spot. And I'm going to go ahead and mark that as well. And I'll take that out. Now I've got that marked as well. So I'm going to cut this the same way. Okay, so here we've got, I've removed the fabric on the top. And now I've removed the fabric on the bottom. And so now we want to cut this out with a coping saw. So we need another, another hole in here so we can put the coping saw in. So that's the next thing we'll do. I'll take you, I'll meet you out in the garage and we'll punch a hole so we can get the coping saw in there and cut this out. Okay, well, here we're back in the garage, and uh, so we, we've got the hat with the cloth removed so we can get ready to cut out the hole for the fan. So I've got the punch, and I had a punch that was bigger than the other. That'll make it easier to get the saw in. And so I'm going to just take and punch out a hole close to the edge. All right, so we've got a hole and I'll use that to put the coping saw in. Okay, so here we are back uh, where I can sit down and uh, cut this out. 
We got the hole, I put the, I just took the coping saw blade off and put it in the hole. And this is plastic, so it cuts pretty easily. So I just gently cut this and follow around the circle. Okay, you get the idea. And then when I get this hole all cut out, we'll come back and start assembling the hat. So here we are uh, back. We've now got a hole cut in here. We've got the holes for the screws, the hole for the fan. And what we really want to do is we really want to hide these wires inside the fan so they're not hanging out inside. So I'm going to take uh, something to poke it. It's a little ice pick. And I'm going to just put a hole right by this and off at an angle kind of towards the one side. And kind of make that hole as big as I can. And what I want to do is try to put those wires for the fan through that hole. It does have a little connector on here that I'm not going to use, so I'm just going to cut that off. And what I'm going to try to do now is just put the fan in here. The fan does have a little mark showing you the direction of air. Uh, although it, it's just a little emblem in, in black, I, I put magic uh, marker uh, silver there to show. But basically, uh, the, this is on the bottom. You'll see this in the bottom of the hat. Get the airflow direction correct. And let's see if we can get these wires through the hole. And so now we've got that wire going in there, which is great. And there's where the fan's going to sit. Now what I'm going to do is take these three-quarter inch 632 screws. I'm going to put them through the uh, bottom plate, which will go under the brim. And then I'm going to try to guide them through the holes in the cap and I'm going to try to get them into the holes in the fan. Okay, so that's what we have so far. We have that bottom plate on there. We have the fan in the right orientation. And now I'm going to take our little adapter, which has the tapped holes that I put in there. And now I'm going to screw that into the adapter. And then we've got the mount. And then of course, there's our gasket that we'll put on. And then grab a filter. And then we can put that filter on there. Okay, so now that is tight. We do have some wires in the inside of the hat. We have yet to put on a plug on the back of the hat. And so that's what we need to do next. So now let's go ahead and put this plug on the back of the hat and really do the same thing. I'm going to we're going to be cutting off this wire, making a little shorter, so I'm going to make that a little bit, cut those uh, pieces off, so maybe it'll go through a little bit easier. And this hat has netting in here, but your hat may be solid, but in any case, you can just make a hole, try to make that hole big enough that you can get these wires through, and sometimes they catch some of the threads, and. You have to kind of move it a little bit. This time I was a little lucky. Just went through without any problem. And, and I usually leave a, about a half inch of wire showing in there. And you can see what the next thing we have to do is to connect these wires. So I, what I'm going to do off camera is I'm going to cut these wires and line them up and then uh, strip them 
and maybe I'll show you some of that if you haven't seen that before, but probably many of you have done a lot of these things. Um, but in any case, I'm going to get those soldered, these wires soldered together. I'm going to put some heat shrink tubing on these so that I can slip it over and, and have those. And when we do that, then we'll be done. So okay, we've got just a little more to do on this hat, and then we're going to be done. Uh, what we're going to do today is uh, solder up these uh, wires to, from the fan to the plug in the back. Uh, I've already cut off a little bit of the wire on this uh, plug. Uh, also, um, I'm going to uh, put some heat shrink tubing on these wires so that they don't connect with each other. It's only 12 volts, but still it can short out. So uh, yeah, I'm going to solder these wires. And so I've just got some shrink tubing you can buy at the hardware store. And I'll show you. Uh, we put a little heat gun on that, a little blower, like a hair dryer, really. And I, I'll take and put that on this, on these two wires. I can't tell you how many times I've wired, soldered some wires together and forget to put the heat shrink tubing on until after I've soldered the wires. So it's good to remember to do that before you solder the wires. Okay, then uh, there are various wire strippers you can get. I've just got this old fashioned, uh, but works well. And I'll just strip off a little bit of the insulation on the red wire and the black wire. Now you, uh, I solder these wires together because um, I'm kind of old school. That's what I've been doing for years. But I have uh, crimped wires too. So if you, if you're uh, uh, in the habit of crimping wires together, um, th that'll work fine. No problem with that, of course. Um, soldering. If you do uh, want to do some soldering, uh, one of the things that's happened over the years is. Um, they got rid of lead solder for a uh, good reason. So I don't, I don't think you can find lead solder anymore. And um, the, some of the substitute solders they have don't work really well. But I have found a solder. Um, I don't have any connection with uh, OD uh, solder, but um, this is a, a nice solder to use these days that doesn't have any lead in it, uh, but it's silver. And a little more expensive, but boy, it really works really well. So uh, if you can if you can see that 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 this solder works really well, and you don't very need very much. Uh, that company also makes a real nice paste flux. That I'm sure there are other ones out that work just as well, but these are the ones that I found, and I just get these just at Ace Hardware. So if you're having trouble with some soldering, then that's that's a good solder to consider. Um, I like to just take these uh, ends, just put a little bit of flux on them, just stick it in the flux, that's all that's needed. Then I've got a soldering gun, not a gun, but a little iron, and uh, put a little bit of solder on it. And since we've got some flux on there, it just heats up. And that, what this is, for those of you who've done soldering before, it's just called tinning. It just takes and puts the solder on the, on the wire. You can kind of see it flow into there. And then they're, they're kind of ready to be soldered together. It's kind of hard to, if you only have uh, two hands, like I do, it's uh, difficult to hold the two solder wires together and the soldering iron all at once. So it's kind of nice to have something to hold. This is something I built to test a bunch of LED light bulbs. And um, it just has a, a nice little clip there. And so that allows me to have a free hand so I can take and just put a little heat on these and since they're already tinned they make a nice connection so that's the red wire and I'll do the same thing on the black wire I hope you guys can see that but you get the idea Probably if you don't. And 
And since these wires are tinned, it really doesn't take much heat at all to, to just melt the solder so they're in good contact. Okay, that's all that's needed. And then what I'm going to do next is take these heat shrink tubing, just put them over these connections that I made. And then I'm going to take the take this out uh, in the garage where I've got a heat gun and I'm just going to shrink that tubing. I'll show you that. Okay, so I just have a, a heat gun here. Uh, this one's actually from Ace, but a lot of places make them. I'll just turn that on and I'm just heating up this heat shrink tubing. It doesn't really take too much. That's all it takes. And then now this these wires can just be folded underneath the hat band inside and they should work out fine. If they kind of flip up on you, you can go in uh, with a little needle and thread and kind of stitch one or two connections in there to keep it from flipping up. But generally it'll just sit in underneath there and be fine. Okay, let's stop the video here. We'll go back in, put the face shield on and we should be all done. Okay, we're almost done. We're back in here. We just uh, got those wires connected with the heat shrink tubing on and the hat's ready to go. Um, at this point, really the only thing we need to do is to attach this. This is a the face shield that I'm uh, using. As I say, there are several out there, but this one kind of attaches to the brim. It's got a couple little slots on each side, so it's kind of a nice design and it just slides over and you can kind of just put that in and, and pull it back. And I kind of pull it back where it just gets close so you've got the air as close to your face as you can get it, but still allowing some air to come in. And uh, so uh, now we're ready to give it a try. So I take and put on the hat not too tight and we have our cable that we had before and our power pack so I'll reach back and plug that in and turn on the power pack and it works just fine so once again uh, we've got a, a real light design that will allow you to Keep air flowing, protecting your eyes, and give you fresh air to breathe, clean air to breathe, and hopefully that helps keep us a little safer, not 100% safe, but safer from all this uh, COVID virus that's going around. Uh, before I end, I'll show you another hat. This is the hat that my wife has, kind of likes uh, the uh, pink and the pink camel. And, uh, Here's another example of another camel and some pink. So you can choose the any hat that you like, but they all work just fine. So thanks very much. I hope this helps you uh, stay safe. We'll talk to you later. Bye.